Hi, students. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So I came across this video where they were talking about a Tuskegee experiment which happened in Black community. And this doctor actually came out to talk about how 600 participants came out for that, right? And after that, they found out that about 400 of them already had the syphilis. Bro, no, he's lying because I never, something like that did not exist. That is not true. Telling me that the 400 black people that came out had it, already had it, right? Now, what you ought to note that when they called it, like, you know, when they called for this experiment, they did not tell them what this experiment was like, and they didn't tell them it was Tuskegee syphilis, right? It was after that, and uh, they told them that it's going to last for a couple of weeks, if I am not mistaken, which like extended for like years. And why I'm actually very like, you know, sad because some people are really very wicked minded. Why did I say that? A lot of people actually came out, especially people that are couples, right? Just coming out to probably take the injection because they said it's just a normal experiment and it's going to stop, right? And then ended up transfer, like, you know, probably giving it to their spouse and all that. And that was how it kept going without them giving them the proper medical care for what they gave them injection for or what they, they experiment for, right? And this one is actually out here trying to lie. Let's get into this. Okay, I know the government is probably poisoning us. Oh, yeah, they've actually done that. They uh, deliberately and secretly infected over 400 black men with syphilis just to see what the disease would do to them long term and refuse them treatment for decades. Hi, I'm Dr. C, and at this point, I am professionally tired. So the purpose of that video was to point out that conspiracy theorists will often go reaching for things that don't actually exist and looking for ways that the government is hurting people while ignoring the ways in which the government actively harms marginalized communities. And I am 100% on board with that. But in the process, they have made that claim about the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, which is a myth that actively harms marginalized communities. The myth is that federal research scientists injected 400 black American men in Tuskegee, Alabama with syphilis in order to see what would happen to them. The truth is that scientists identified a community where syphilis was already prevalent, and so they found 600 participants to be a part of the study, all of whom enrolled without adequate knowledge and information about what was going on. 399 of those participants already had syphilis at the start of the study. The other 201 did not. And the scientists documented what happened to their bodies as they were intentionally withholding medical treatment just so they could see what would happen over the decades because this study ran from 1932 to 1972. And this study was a secret in as much as the participants and their families were not told the truth, but this was also very well documented. These were federal research scientists who took notes on everything, and so we know what the truth is. And the truth is, they did not inject syphilis into these men. And rather than hold up a blank sheet of paper that is a prop to represent some secret government document, here is an actual example of one of the many research articles written about the Tuskegee experiment. And this one in particular gets into the issue of how prominent it is that people believe in this myth. Now you might be saying, but Dr. Cruz, isn't it true that the government has done terrible things to people in the name of medical research? Oh, absolutely. In 1946, the US government and Guatemalan government worked together to inject STDs into thousands of Guatemalan citizens who had no idea what was being done to them. And for roughly 70 years, doctors were working with state and federal authorities to forcefully sterilize people who had no idea what was being done to them. It was an absolute nightmare. There is good reason for marginalized communities to distrust the medical industry and especially when it's connected to the government. And the thing is, those are all terrible enough without pushing a falsehood about government scientists injecting people with a disease as we are still dealing with a pandemic. And one of the primary ways of dealing with that pandemic is to get people to take vaccines. Furthermore, it is worth noting that it is because of things like the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, the Guatemalan STD experiment, and the Nuremberg trials that we have federal laws now that really limit the ways in which we can conduct research. For example, did you know that any research organization that receives public funding has to have their research approved <laughs> by what is referred to as an institutional review board or a human subject review board, which are basically ways that lawyers have developed to protect civilians against scientists. And bear in mind that I said publicly funded research organizations. Privately funded research does not have to abide by ethics considerations in the same way, so keep an eye out for that. 
And admittedly, it is not a perfect system. We still have ethical issues that pop up all the time, but we are light years away from where we used to be and we have people whose sole job is to further improve the system. Like I said, I support the original poster's point. I agree with everything that they said. It's just that we can make that point while also doing some due diligence and without propagating another falsehood. And if you are really interested in learning more about this sort of thing, I strongly recommend that you go check out Evan the Bioethicist. They do awesome work and their stuff is always worth your time. And just a quick reminder, we are still raising money for the Cotter family in Gaza. They are in dire need of help. And if you can donate anything, that would be great. You can find the link to their GoFundMe in the link tree in my bio. I know the government is probably poisoning us. Oh, yeah, they've actually done that. They uh, deliberately and secretly infected over 400 black men with syphilis just to see what the disease would do to them long term and refuse them treatment for decades. Hi, I'm Dr. C, and at this point, I am professionally tired. It seems like you want everybody to be tired with you, Dr. C. But since I was tagged <clears throat> and I've been asked to do a video on this and I haven't ever, I'll do one here now. But just know, I already know it's not going to go well because I've already seen your comment section. Hi, my name is Evan. I'm a bioethicist and I specialize in misinformation, disinformation, and conspiracy theories as a threat to public health. Now, the Tuskegee Syphilis Study is a very popular historical event that is misrepresented um, and is utilized a lot in misinformation, disinformation, and conspiracy theories that target Black and Latine people. Um, particularly on social media and especially around things like health sciences, like vaccination. Dr. C already covered a lot of the general history of the Tuskegee syphilis study. I'm going to cover the ethical elements and why it's not just semantics. Cause I saw one of the things in his comments section was, Oh, this is just semantics between what the original creator that he stitched said and what you're saying in your video. And it's actually not semantics and it's very important to ethics. And I'll tell you why. Now, there were two studies that the United States Public Health Services did fund that did give people syphilis and gonorrhea, but that was not the Tuskegee syphilis study. The first one is Tara Hot study, which was done from 1943 to 1944 to willing and consenting prisoners in a Tara Hot prison in Indiana. The second is the Guatemala prison experiments, which is when people were directly infected unknowingly with syphilis and gonorrhea and then uh, cancroids um, in a Guatemala prison system. But it also included uh, spicy workers as well as some children, sometimes as young as one. And the person who originally designed the Terra Hot study at the prison was brought in to design the Guatemala prison experiments and then later shipped out to Tuskegee to design portions of the Tuskegee syphilis study. And that was Dr. John Cutler. Now, the intent in the Guatemala prison experiment and the Terra Hot experiment was to discover prophylaxis that could be administered medically, like through medication, um, to individuals, particularly they wanted to do this for uh, United States uh, soldiers, to stage off or protect against the transmission of STIs. <clears throat> What's unique about the Tuskegee syphilis study is that it's a non-therapeutic research, and it's the longest non-therapeutic research that's ever been done historically. And so what that means is it had no intention of coming up with or creating any way to treat something. The entire research project was done specifically just to watch how syphilis affected black men over the course of their lifetimes. Now, the reason why Macon, Alabama is chosen as the Tuskegee Syphilis Study location and the reason why Tuskegee University, a historically black college, is involved is because the original design of the project was supposed to be about getting clinical care and um, ongoing or consistent medical care and watching what that does to an impoverished population that are the uh, direct ancestors of enslaved folks. These sharecroppers are one and two generation removed from having been enslaved. Most of the people in this population had never seen a doctor before. And the original funding source that had proposed this project to be done through the Tuskegee labs ended up bottoming out and backing out in the 1930s once the uh, U.S. Um, economy bottomed out. It was at this point that the United States Public Health Service steps in to not only fund the project, which was supposed to be only six months, 
um, but also changed the nature of the project from providing clinical care to this population to watching what untreated syphilis would do to black men. This is why the actual printed title of the study is the Tuskegee Study of Untreated Syphilis in the Negro Male. So nothing about this study from the beginning was meant to discover anything therapeutic or care. It was just to watch a population be harmed by an illness. So that right there starts your unethical journey or unethical conversation. On top of this, because most of this population was preliterate or unliterate and never developed literacy, uh, they also had a hard time understanding what was being done to them. And this is why consent wasn't really acquired in the same way that it had been in Terre Haute. You see the same thing in the Guatemala prison experiment is that, again, consent is not accessed or not provided because they're dealing with prisoners and also spicy workers. What was communicated to this men is that they would be provided uh, ongoing clinical care by this research team in exchange for taking all sorts of samples, predominantly blood samples. And so what they told them is that they would be testing them consistently for bad blood. This could be everything from anemia to fatigue to syphilis. Bad blood was sort of an overarching term that was used in the population and the community to describe a number of ailments, because remember, this population doesn't access or had never accessed doctor's care. Over the 40 years of taking samples, monitoring, and not interrupting uh, advancing syphilis infection in this population, nothing of substance was gleaned from the research. 40 years of paid for research and nothing informative came from it. And a substantial portion of that was due to the way that this research was executed as well, which was deeply unethical. First of all, the controls were never respected. So even though one population of 399 men who were known to have syphilis were being monitored, and then 201 who were known to not have syphilis at the beginning of the study were being monitored, over the course of time, some of the men in the control group developed syphilis from other things, behaviors, exchanges, who knows. Um, instead of relinquishing them from the project, they would move them over to the syphilis positive population and continue to monitor them. So this already messed up their ability to do comparative analysis. This study starts in 1932 where there is no cure for syphilis. And so there was some argument that possibly could have been made for wanting to watch what syphilis does to a population over time. But by 1947, penicillin is confirmed as an effective, highly effective cure for syphilis. At no point does the study change and start to offer this therapeutic cure to these men, but instead continues for another 25 years without informing them of their status as someone with syphilis, but also that there is a cure for and treatment for their syphilis. Another highly unethical element of this was the use of Eunice Rivers, who was a nurse in Alabama who was hired on to the research team. And it was her job to do a lot of the general interfacing with this population. What occurred from that is, is that she would frequently do things like provide groceries to families to supplement uh, the hunger issues or is access issues. She would give them rides to and from locations and places unrelated to the research. Um, there was a number of ways that she began to provide help that these, this population of deeply um, impoverished people depended on, meaning that it was hard for them, even in instances where they may have been suspicious of what they were being cared for, how they were being cared for, they could not extricate themselves from the research because they depended on the supplemental care being provided. On top of all of that, a substantial portion of the time, the samples that were taken from these men were not usable in the research when they got it back to the lab. And that was because pretty early on, the researchers found it really difficult to get hundreds of men to the research lab at Tuskegee that was an hour or two hours away. And so instead, they would travel to them on their job sites and at lunchtime take samples in the hot Alabama sun. And if you've ever seen what happens to blood under hot Alabama sun, I can tell you it immediately seizes up and coagulates. It would take hours to take samples from hundreds of men. And while this was happening, the already taken samples would be sitting outside in the hot sun in direct sunlight or in a hot car. This would cause things like separation and constant degradation of the samples, meaning that by the time they got back to the lab, they were almost unreadable or unlegible or unusable. The study would come to an end in 1972 when a whistleblower uh, brought it to the media. And this would have a cascade effect on new policy around um, ethics for research subjects. 
Along with change in policy, the Belmont report came out with standards that expanded upon the Nuremberg Code of how people are to be ethically treated in research and around things like consent. The Belmont Report is still really important to bioethics today, and we study it heavily. Before I go, I want to say thank you to Molly Van Slunt for sending me Disappearing Spoon. Uh, for those who don't know, if you like the content, you can always send me a book off of one of my lists. It's not important. You don't have to do it, but some people ask me how to say thank you. These details in historically traumatic events that we absolutely need to make sure more people know about and we tell are not just semantics. They are key components of how we think about ethics and research and patients and care. And they truly are the difference between passing along disinformation that keeps people from engaging with public health and So this is all I got from this video. And uh, <clears throat> I think I have once talked about Tuskegee, not just once, several times. And uh, trust me, that was, I never knew something like that existed, not until like in about years ago, uh, when I started making research and uh, that was very shocking. I am not going to lie to you. And I am not going to lie. I quote from the first man that said that uh, about how many people already had it, that man knew that he was absolutely lying, right? So how did he, like, you know, upon all the, like, all the people they brought, I mean, all the people they brought and lied to them about it. They didn't tell them about the experiment, right? So after, after injecting that, and he is trying to tell me that they knew that they had it. The truth is that they did not have anything, I mean, or they had nothing, right? It was the ex doing why they were trying to experiment that that they injected that on them. So trying to come out here and lie to himself is just like you know no don't come here and say something like that. You can say that you don't know how how it really happened and all that, but coming here to make it look like some people's experiences does not even matter is like you know it's not okay, right? And I keep asking myself why is it that they choose black people? for that experiment at that point in time because I have no idea why they created that at first and decided they tried on black people. They're lying to them. The fact that they lied to them and refused to even give them the proper medicals, right? Because they told them that we want to probably experiment something and like, you know, it's going to be over for how many when? I think it was like for a couple of weeks or something only to find that, that uh, I mean, people ended up living with this for the rest of their lives and that uh, the experiment ended up years. I mean, years. Oh, my goodness. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. These are the things that we, each time I I look at, I really do, I do understand why Black people do not um, uh, trust doctors and all that because, like, how do you want me to trust you? Because I don't even know what will happen, you know, and all of that. Because for them, to, I really do not know how they came up with that experiment. And uh, the fact that they always see cats, dogs, and all that. Sorry for cat lovers, you know, do not feel offended that I am saying, yeah, they, yes, but dog is like a human being, right? If they really needed to, like, you know, experiment that so badly that they needed something, there are animals that share almost the same. I don't know what they call that. There is something that I wanted to say, but I can't remember that, that they share uh, this with, with human beings, right? That they could easily experiment that on them, right? So they did not do that. And they went straight up for human beings and black people were the people that are where their target to do that. And also from what the young lady said, I also found out that uh, Guatemala, right? If I am not mistaken, also had something like that too. Like, why is it that it's mostly minorities that experience things like this? What happened to their own people? Or why did they not even try? Okay, now they wanted to like, you know, experiment something. Why did they not try that with by themselves? Like, you know, with themselves. Let's start with that too. Because some people really want to be crazy by saying that, uh, I mean, some people already had it. Are you okay now? You know, why did those people, why did they not try it on themselves first before any other thing? And you can imagine how horrible something like this, you know, you all know that, okay, they were giving them supplement or just probably taking food 
and whatever to them and all that without giving them the real proper medication that will help them like you know heal and uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. see black people if you are angry with anybody i will never come in between because you all have every reason when i say every reason every reason to be very angry with anybody every reason because this is actually evil this is evil and how they sit down and think about things like this and then come up with it and then try it on people it's really something i don't understand when there are so many things people could experiment, experiment with no why would they do that uh, let's just go for you know these people and then people that you know some people had okay some people were husband and wife you know or probably a husband or a wife experimenting it okay let's say it this way i'm sorry that i am just running around but my, my brain is spinning maybe a husband took that got that right through the injection went home without the wife knowing and coupled and the wife got it so you can imagine how many people died within that years because these people did not know what was going on with them. I don't know if that makes sense to you. How many people died in that process? See you all in my next video. Bye for now.